Hey everybody, we're back. So we've got these pictures in paint.net, okay? And everything is ready to go. So we need to get those in a format that GB Studio can deal with. So we need a new file and we need a file that works for the GB Studio format. So the smallest format that you can have in GB Studio is 160 by 144 pixels. So that's the type of file you want to create, a new file that's 160 by 144, okay? And what I'm going to do is paint the whole background black. So I'm going to click here and we're going to paint the whole background with black. Let's try that again. There we go, okay? And so that's going to be our background. Then if you want to create a new layer, okay, then rename the layer. You can rename the layer 96 by 96. And that's what we're going to create here to build the actual picture onto. Okay, So you can do a layer and move it around if you want to. Okay, Or since these are already 96 by 96 up here, just take one of those and select the whole thing. Okay, it should say 96 by 96 down there at the bottom and do control C, which is copy, and then control V, which is paste, and move that into the middle of the page. Now it's not going to fit perfectly in the middle, but you can move it around until you feel like it's lined up. Okay, and then we've got the basic shape here for our design. Depending on what you want to do with the background, okay, it might be to the left or right if you're going to add something with that as far as um, user interface or actual gameplay mechanics or something like that. So that's one way to add that in. And this is just a way for us to get that, this into the game situation and get it ready to go. So you just copy and paste it into place while it's selected there, okay? So the other thing we can do is we can make some adjustments to here. If you do this artistic filter and ink sketch, it'll turn this into more or less a black and white drawing, okay? And you won't have as much gray there. So you can adjust the slider to make it a little thicker or whatever, but that kind of helps turn it into more or less black and white and get rid of the gray. So effects and then artistic and ink sketch. Okay. And then it'll be much closer to true black and white, which is really what we want when we start trying to add color. So ink sketch looks pretty good. Effects ink sketch. Okay. So now we're basically in a black and white image, which is going to be better for what we're trying to do here. So let's delete that part and let's go ahead and control C to copy that into place and control V to put that into place. Okay. And so once we get that lined up pretty close to where we want it to be, then we'll call that good for now. Okay. And I have a template that I use with each one, but now that you've already made this 160 by 144 with the 96 by 96 in the middle, then all you need to do is just save this as, okay, your first actual background. So go to your U tutorial or whatever your game is called, okay, go to assets and then backgrounds and then, um, what you want to do is save this as a PNG. So we'll make this U tutorial path 01.png. Okay, so we're going to save that as a PNG. Okay, and so that'll be in there. And then we can go back and edit that PNG later if we want to and fill some things in. So that's the way that you would save that PNG file in there. So 
in order to add color to these, okay, you're going to spend a little bit of time here working on this part, okay? And what you want to do is use the paint bucket and you want to fill in the colors. So before we do that though, we need to set up our actual background palette. So let me grab a actual GB Studio file and I'll be right back and we'll set up our palette. All right, so what I did was go to the sample project and pull up outside.png. That's the sample file that comes with GB Studio. And so we're gonna set up our palette like we did for our sprite palette here by color picking from this image. So we're gonna take our color picker and we're gonna pick there and we're going to add the black, okay? And then we're gonna use the color picker and we're gonna pick the dark green. We're gonna click add and add the dark green. Then we're gonna use the color picker and pick the light green, click add and then add the light green. And then we're gonna use the color picker and pick this really lightest green, almost white. Oops, there we go again. Click the white, click add and add the white. So our backgrounds in GB Studio can be any of these four colors, black, dark green, light green, and white. Our sprites only had three of those colors, but they had the transparent color as well. So now we have all of this and we can save this current palette as U tutorial and now it's all ready to go and we can start building some painting with our pictures here. So I'm going to click the paint bucket and I'm going to start painting. So if I want dark green, then I'm going to fill that in. And if you notice, it doesn't quite fill everything in. So you can pull this slider here. This is the tolerance slider and it'll tell you what you, uh, how much is actually getting filled in, what the tolerance is for because even though this looks all white, there's still some gray in there. So if I slide this all the way back, it won't do nearly as much. So let's just try that and see what happens so you can see the idea. So if my tolerance is set to like 9%, then this is not exactly the same color. So if I slide the tolerance up, it'll fill the tree more. Okay, until everything is filled. Okay, and that's the way you want to work with that idea there. Now, if I click here, you can see it filled all of this because this black line is broken. So if I click undo and I get my pencil and I take a black, then I can actually fill these. I want it to be black, right? So we'll color that in there and we'll go from there. So. Oh, I see. So the GB Studio uh, color that we picked was not a true black, um, and this is more of a true black. So if you really want to have a true black in there, then you might want to go and grab the darkest black that you can and add that to your palette, okay, because that, sometimes it's nice to have that true black in there when you're doing this drawing portion, so less, and then you can work with the GP Studio black a little bit later. So we're going to finish in some of these lines here so that stuff doesn't jump out in between. and. It's a little bit tricky to tell all of the time, but this will let us try to draw those lines into place a little bit. So here we go. So let's try filling now and see what happens. Yep, that filled pretty well. That filled pretty well. Okay, so we'll fill in these trees here. Well, oh, that's a chimney, but it doesn't really look like one. So we can figure that out in a little bit. Um, so remember, these are the colors that we're using for this 
tutorial. Oop, I have a break right there. So every once in a while you'll just find one that isn't completely filled in and you'll have to do that. So, so you'll spend a little time here filling in and coloring your background so that it works for you. Okay, the primary color and the secondary color, sometimes if this is still selected, when you click these, it'll switch colors. So sometimes you have to click out of the actual picture to make sure that it doesn't automatically change your colors again. So we're going to try this and fill in there. It's pretty hard to see. GB Studio is only going to display these four colors, so even if your color is close, whatever your color is, it's going to display whatever the closest color is to the one that you have chosen. So even if you're not using the approved GB Studio colors, it's going to change whatever color you used to the one that's closest to it. And that's the way that the engine keeps track of its colors. So we'll do that here. Let's click out of there, fill this in. And then we'll just kind of fill this background here and see what we get. Probably doesn't matter that I'm doing these parts like this, but we'll be cool. So now I've got everything colored in with this, so I'll go ahead and add it to my background. It's a little easier to color it when it's by itself over here than it is to color Control-C to copy. Control V to paste it and then drag it into place and use your arrow keys to move it one pixel at a time until you get it lined up just right. Okay, so we've got that first one, so we'll save and then it's saved as ututorial.png. Okay, so then we'll color all these other ones and we'll just resave this so we have four colors in there. So let me color those in and then I'll come back and show you the rest. Alright, let's try to finish up this coloring part here. So I went ahead and used my paint bucket to color in all of these. It may not be perfect, but for what we're trying to show here, this is good enough to get us started. So now that I have this as path 01, let's add the other parts of the path to it. So take this second one, select 96 by 96, right? Control C, which is copy, and then Control V, which is paste, and then drag this in and move it one pixel at a time till it lines up. One, two, there. Okay, so that's lined up now. Now be careful, save as, and then change this to path O2, something different so you know which one it is, okay? And now we've got that as a PNG. Then we will select the third one in our row and we will select everything, control C to copy, control V to paste it in, and then move it down one pixel at a time until you're on top of the other one. And then we're going to save as a, oh, we saved as PDN last time. So we don't really want a PDN for all of these. We want a PNG. So we need path three PNG. So we better do that. So now we've got PNG. Oh yeah, remember it's going to tell us to flatten. If you were on the other videos, you know it always does that. That should have been my first thing. So 
Uh, we can go back and undo to get back these other things here. So let's go back to paste. And there's the original file. So we better go and save it as path 02.png. There we go. Okay. So all we really want is the PNG. Okay. We can save one of these as the PDN file, which, and then we can turn that into our template file so we can always have that hanging around. And then let's go here to this last one and we'll select everything, control copy, control paste, and we'll drag that into place. And we'll have all four of them now. So then we'll save as tutorial path 04 PNG. And then let's make sure that we have all four of our paths in there. So go back out to your explorer and go here and check what you have in your U tutorial backgrounds folder. So I have a PNG for 01, 02, 03, and 04. And then I have a PDN, which is the path one. But we can turn that into like our 96 by 96 template file. And then we can always be using that later in case we don't just want to open one of these up and copy on top of them, right? So we've got all those things saved in our folder. And next time I will come back and I'll show you how to drop those into actual GB Studio. And we will add some triggers and make our character walk around in that background that we just made, okay? So believe it or not, that's kind of a quick way to get a background put together without having to learn a brand new program like Tiled to build an actual tile map. So it is still a little tricky and time consuming, but that gives us a start. So we'll be back next time and I'll show you how to drop these backgrounds in to the actual GB Studio program. All right, see you guys later. Bye-bye.